Hey, what's up everybody? Chris Souders, Slunger Cat Outdoors, back with you again this morning. And this morning, we're going after Gizzard Chad. Got a couple trips planned here the next couple days, and I don't want to have to worry about catching bait each day, so got the old extreme tank in the boat, gonna fill it up, and that way I can just get to it and fish the next couple days. But I want to take you guys along, share some tips and tricks with you guys on how I catch these summertime Gizzard Chads, so stick around. Okay, so we're gonna start right here in this little backwater. Um, Got to set the trolling motor up a little bit higher. It's super, super shallow. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start right here at the mouth of where it meets this small river, and I'm gonna start working my way back into it. Uh, that'll do a couple things. One, we don't wanna go back through there and stir everything up. For every time that we throw the net, that is kind of, you know, letting the shad know that we're there, okay? So we're gonna work our way back through there and we wanna keep a pretty good pace. Um, I don't want to, you know, just throw it and let the net pull the pull the boat. I wanna use my trolling motor and I got the, got the remote hooked to the opposite side that I'll be throwing from so it doesn't get tangled up. And like I said, I'm gonna work through here pretty quick. Uh, it can be, it can be exhausting, but, uh, but sometimes that's what you gotta do. You gotta get on them quick, and whenever you get them running, you gotta keep them going. You keep that net rolling, and just put as many as the boat as you possibly can as quick as you can. So, let's try it. So the net that I wanna start with this morning, like I said earlier, I want big gizzard chat. I want those six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10-inch gizzard chat, okay? Good big live baits, good cut baits. I wanna use a Phytech. This is a GS1000 series. It's actually a mullet net. It is one pound per radius foot, and it is one inch mesh size. Now this is a 10 foot size. Something I recommend everybody do is use the biggest net you possibly can. Now that doesn't mean the heaviest net you possibly can throw, but the biggest net that you're legally allowed to throw. Okay, if that is a six foot net, then throw a six foot by one inch mesh net um, if you want bigger, bigger baits. Always match it to the bait size if we're in here and all we can get are smaller five and six inch gizzard shad, then I might have to downsize my mesh size in my net so that I don't gill them and kill them or break all the scales off of them, okay? So that's the net we're gonna be using today. And like I said, I'm gonna work from the mouth up in and try to get on them as quickly as we can before the sun gets really, really high. Good thing is water's just a little bit stained. That helps out a little bit, um, kinda, give you just a little bit of an advantage. Muddy water is actually best, and uh, all we can do is give it a shot and try. So if you're wondering how to throw a net, this GS1000 series or Phytec series, super spreader nets, they have a nice cuff that goes right on your wrist. It's super comfortable. And then I'm right-handed, so I'd coil everything in about one foot coils in my right hand. And these need to be clockwise coils so that everything comes out nice and smooth. I leave about 12 to 18, 15 inches and then I'll go down the net about the same length as whatever that last bit of rope is off your lead line. And I'll grab it once. Now this is a 10 footer so some of this will be different uh, depending on how small or how big the net is. Now I'll wrap that clockwise as well, and then my last grab will be right at my waist, okay? And I'm gonna shake that net open, make sure there's no tangles, and I'm gonna get about half of it, and I, I wanna grab halfway between my right hand and the lead, and I'm gonna wrap that straight up and over top of it, okay? And I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna grab the lead line straight right here at the bottom, lay it up and over top of it, and then I'm gonna grab it again. Now whenever I throw this, I wanna throw it kinda out and up, and I'm gonna hold onto this and with my left hand just a little bit longer and let the net pop open, okay?
Now the wind is blowing a little bit, putting a nice ripple on the water, which kind of makes it hard to see them flick. But we'll just keep working back through here and see what we can come up with. Having a good trolling motor with uh, the direction of the north button, like I have here, really helps you out, especially if you got to catch bait by yourself. Now, if you got somebody that can help you uh, with the motor, that helps out a lot too. First one. Now one thing I like to do is throw it and let the boat go past it. And it makes it easier to close the net. There's a good one. Now, I'm just putting them straight into the tank today. With the, the way the filtering system works on these new extreme tanks, you don't have to purge them. I used to have to, you know, purge my shad into a bucket or, or you know, a little barrel or something. Before I put them into my older tanks but once I started using extreme there's no need to do it the filtering system on them is so good that it'll clean everything out and you can just you don't have to handle them twice whenever you're trying to catch them in this super shallow water like this don't worry about trying to find them on the sonar. Your eyes Your eyes will be your sonar. <laughs> nice big baits. Now we're only in about three foot of water here. But they're in here. Now something else to do while you're pulling in the net is to go ahead and wrap everything up as you're pulling it in and that would definitely save you some time and expedite the process. Now for me, I know it seems a lot like a lot more work, but I like to be able to catch them, you know, two, three, four at a time. Uh, when you start catching too many at a time, 
it's really hard on them. They flick and beat each other down and knock a lot of their own scales off. It's a little bit more work, but worth it in the end. We're getting on them now. Okay, these little rings you look like here, if you watch real closely, you actually see the gizzard shad flipping. And you'll see little rings come to the top of the water where they're popping. That's what we're looking for. Now, they will run from you pretty quick, but you just got to get on them. something different did not expect to catch one of them back here there you go look at that spoonbill let's get him back in the water that was pretty cool There we go. That's gonna make perfect bait for tomorrow. We got enough. It took us a little while, it was a lot of work, but well worth it. It's gonna pay dividends, having the freshest bait you possibly can. So hopefully you guys learned something today. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you're able to go out and catch the best, freshest bait you possibly can, which is gonna in turn help you catch the biggest fish you possibly can. If you like the information we're putting out, make sure you hit that thumbs up. Share the video if you get a chance, and also hit subscribe. Till next time, we'll catch you on the water, and God bless.